Hello everyone, welcome back to the Circle Game series. My name is John and I'm a software engineer here at Clockwork Labs. If it looks like I'm very tired, it's because it's currently one in the morning and we've been preparing to go to GDC and my flight is in two hours, so I'm sorry for that. Anyway, uh, for the first day, we're gonna work on the player leaderboard logic and some basic logic for player splitting. So let's check it out. Super jerky because it's like, uh, it's doing something. We can We can figure this out. You know, Drogus, he brings up a great point. He really does bring up a great point because this is this really is the server data. You are right, Drogus. He's totally right. Um, thank you for that. Because the interpolation is done on the client. It is not done on the server. So this function is basically entirely wrong. What we should be doing instead is we have this... And what we want to do is we want the entity, but we want like so here we have the center of mass function, which as the function implies calculates the center of mass for all the player circles. The problem here is what Drogas pointed out. We're using the latest server side values for calculating the center of mass instead of using the interpolated client values. So here now we're just going to look up the unity game object for each circle and actually calculate the center of mass based on those values instead. Wow, beautiful. That legitimately fixed the problem. Okay, very cool. So now if I split actually, it should work with the split logic too. We'll test the split to see if the split um, is now affecting the camera as well. So if I have some mass, right? And then I go to split. Um, I need to like get these apart from each other. So I guess I'll like collect some mass here on the right hand side like that. And then if I can just get these to separate and then now Uh, the camera is clearly working properly. It's just we have to add in the logic where your circle cannot um, collide with another circle that you have. Like your circle shouldn't be able to like fully overlap like this unless. So this is the same day, but now we're joined by Tyler, one of the co-founders of Clockwork Labs. Now we will begin working on the leaderboard logic, which will show player standings in the game. And delete this and then we'll add a leaderboard controller to the leaderboard. Right. So what I would do personally is uh, just on update, run through all the players in the player DB. So not on insert. Okay. Um, and just take the top 10. That's probably fine. There's not going to be thousands of players. I think I can do... So we can get the local player controller. Could just make this public. Yeah. Okay, so then in here, all we have to do is players is game manager dot player ID to player controller values. Are sorts no, um, so we want to select and we want to take first of all the player controller and then we want to take a dot total mass. And I guess this isn't public, we have to make this public, although it does have like some link inside of there, so I guess we can just move it. So we select on this and then order by, we have to do a a dot item two like this. Okay, that's fine. Okay, so then in the leaderboard row, we'll have a public GUI. Um, so this is the username text, and then we'll have one for the 
points text, or I guess mass text. So what I'm doing here is I'm configuring the logic for displaying rows in the leaderboard display. Basically, the algorithm we're following here is that we're grabbing all the players, sorting them by the amount of points they have, and then displaying the top 10 in that order. If there are less than 10 players in the game, we need to trim the rows so that only the amount of players are displayed, which is what the trim rows function is for. The server is caught up. Um, whoa. But it will still try to process all inputs, even if they're like old. Because we don't right. we don't handle that. I don't know how it happens, but it's different. It, in ours, it seems like it's possible to get your circles did you split a million times i i, I split um do you want to go to the upper left and then eat all of my circles so that i can test if this is working i do but it's going to take me a while okay oh, okay i see you ah, i see it's still processing all those it's you have been eaten okay beautiful and I feel like we no. <laughs> uh, okay. The, the lag in this case is not. It has nothing to do with anything except um, the computation of the collision loop. So if you want to, I just uh, signed out. But if you would like to, so that's why you got fast again. But um, if you want to go into the collision loop and put a put a timer, let's find out. We should be doing this every fifty milliseconds every 50 milliseconds but i bet you were taking like 300 milliseconds so Almost. we want to we want to time this yeah this whole loop um excuse me yeah, duration see. duration probably four milliseconds checks out and then if i split how long is it taking which now i have i split once i have four circles actually i have three circles no i have four circles jk when you hit once yep <laughs> uh it's taking 10 milliseconds right it takes two milliseconds per circle which makes sense so we just have to either make that faster or improve our algorithm or something so I'm going to hit spacebar once here. Okay. Oh, you're right. It totally is. Hold on. Let me see how many times. Split was called twice. So we are calling the server function two times when you split. Is that right? Oh, no. Wait. Hold on. We're calling oh. it once per circle instead of once per once, player. We're calling it once per player. So every for every player in the game, you're going to call and player there you go. split. That'll so we it. have to say if um, we have to move this. Uh, no, we don't need to move it necessarily. You just want to just put it if it's local. Yeah. Okay, awesome. So that was the end of the first day. For the second day, we are mainly going to be focused on physics and specifically the physics of the player having multiple circles. So when the player has multiple circles, they're supposed to come together as if they are being affected by gravity, basically. Um, but we decide to run our own physics logic here. So uh, let's see how that ends up going for us. Some velocity. So we'll do spawned circle dot splits. Oh, I see. Split velocity is equal to, we have to take the player's current direction. 
Although, is it still in the circle? If it is on the circle, it shouldn't be. Circle that direction. It is still on the circle. So we do have to do circle. Update by entity ID, spawn circle, entity ID. Like that. Oh, I see. So update by entity ID. Oh, okay. I understand. Sorry. Okay. So this is like let circle ID is equal to circle dot entity ID. And then we just have to like that, right? Player update by player ID. Player let player ID is equal to player dot ID at player the player classic there we go now we can now we can move again okay cool so i'm gonna eat 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 and then once i get large enough we shall split so then okay so now we need a force that's just in general bringing them together oh my god look at that though that worked beautifully. That was pretty close to what they do. That was that was pretty excellent, I would say, like in terms of uh, the feel for it. I think that was good. Yeah, so the other thing too is when I split, I'll split one more time here. You'll notice they don't go out very far now. Because I think that centering velocity is having an impact on that velocity. So we might just have to make that greater. Uh, is overlapping. We have... Circle entity and other entity other circle um just reset position yeah so. and this might produce some weird artifacts because if you're moving even for other reasons this is gonna like stop you so it's gonna be like if i'm overlapping with another circle i will not move in any direction never mind just overlapping right so that might not be the answer but let's try it and see how it feels so there's a decay factor, which will make the circles slightly smaller, which will make them that no longer been. overlapping. So we can barely move. We can just other way around, I guess, where this should just be is overlapping. Oh. And let's, let's try this quickly. Cultivating mass. Yes. Okay. Excellent. Uh, for what Look it's worth, that. for what That's it's worth, cool. progress is being made. It's it's looking more correct. Although we've got to fix the physics here, obviously. But looking very cool. Soon unlit shader for now. This should give me yes. Okay, fragment and vertex. Okay, so I think what we should start with is basically recreating the same effect that we already have, but then doing it in HLSL. So I'm going to rename this to Circle HLSL. And we're going to work to convert the existing shader into HLSL. So I'm going to pull open circle shader. OK, and then we're going to add the going to add the X position back in. So then this is going to be position dot X. Set there, set the length of that vector to be 
what we want it to be, which is the full length of the vector. Circle entity dot position minus entity dot position. To be the our both our radiuses added together. Uh, um, if that makes sure. sense. Sure. So like take our position and then e plus equals. It really shouldn't. We should really create like a force if you're overlapping because you want to push it away over a period of frames. So it's not going to like jump. If you end up like when you split, you're going to be right on top of each other and it's going to just like in the next frame immediately teleport very far. Yes. So my prediction is that our velocity is not going to affect this though. Like they're just going to split and they're going to stay together is my... Mm. Yes. No, that's not mine. Are you what? The reason why is because we do the we do our position update here, which is taking into account all things, right? It's taking into account the oh, player's direction, the magnitude, all that, the split velocity. But then here we're going, oh no, 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 no. Um set a position. Just set the position to this thing. Maybe we and... should just do that other thing at the end. That would also work, right? And so we want collision velocity to be equal to, it's a circle. So this is the speed. So then the thing that we should actually end up adding here then is going to be the two other circle times normalized, or sorry, dot normalized times speed like this. Okay, I do say that um, works, although not um, not necessarily keeping us apart as much as it should be. So the reason is that the minus one makes it so that the distance, if you're not, if you're just barely overlapping, is going to be zero. Or so that the speed is going to be zero, right? Yeah. But if yeah. we get rid of the minus one, then it's at a minimum of one if you're overlapping at all. So that'll be good. Indeed, indeed. Okay, so we should have one circle that shoots out and then the other one should kind of stick around and then they should come together. Okay, awesome. So that was the end of day two. And unfortunately with that, the end of the circle game series for now. Uh, after that stream, we kind of wrapped up the circle game as best as we could. Uh, there's still some work to be done with it. Like for example, we need to be using an actual physics library instead of just our janky physics uh, logic that we kind of wrote live on stream. So we're gonna fix that up. Um, but the project itself is available on GitHub. The link for that is gonna be in the description below. So definitely check that out. Um, but now I think I would take the opportunity to actually give you guys a preview of what we've been working on for the last month or so on the Twitch stream. We've actually been working on porting an open source Minecraft server implementation on top of SpaceNDB. So the Minecraft server as it was written is just a Rust application, but we've been taking that and actually just porting it into SpaceNDB so that it's running in SpaceNDB as a server module. Uh, so if you're interested in seeing that, definitely check us out on Twitch. We are live every Wednesday and Friday. Uh, and with that, we'll see you in the next one.